If I asked you to think of an audio format that changed drastically during its lifetime, and then I asked you to think about one that didn't change at all, you probably wouldn't answer a compact cassette to that second question. But there was a whole lineup of compact cassette players and recorders that were essentially the same from the 1960s all the way through the 2000s. Let's talk about those for a minute. I see you're recording your favorite song from the speaker. It's going to sound terrible, but it sure didn't stop you from doing it, now did it? Experience the magic of being able to record something and then play it back. And that began long before you started recording hair bands from the radio. I think to understand why these didn't change much in the 40 or 50 year life cycle of the cassette tape, we have to go back in time a little bit and understand why the cassette was invented in the first place. Fans of the compact cassette will already know that it was invented by Philips in Belgium in the early 1960s and introduced in September of 1963. The compact cassette technology was originally designed for dictation machines, but improvements in the fidelity later led the cassette to supplant the stereo 8-track and the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder in most non-professional applications. At the advent of the home computer age, Devices similar to the dictation machines were used for data storage and retrieval. Sticking with our theme, one of the first cassette recorders introduced was the Philips EL3300 and later this EL3302, which should look familiar. Most of the early machines required a microphone to be plugged in externally, but later on most machines came with a built-in microphone for ease of use. So what made this such a groundbreaking invention then? Weren't there things around before that we could record our voices on and play them back? Reel-to-reel -reel recorders require some skill on the part of the operator. Loading loose tape, threading it through the mechanism, and then re-spooling and rewinding at the end of the recording. Not the most convenient proposition. Later in the 1950s, RCA introduced one of the first cassette formats. It was large, and the decks weren't the most portable designs, so it tended to be more of a home music format aimed at the home recordist who wanted a simpler to use system than open reels. Since we're more concerned with these basic dictation devices, we'll leave music recording on cassette for another video. So let's take a look around a basic model from the 1990s, early 2000s from Radio Shack. Now this was at the height of the portable recorder market, so this one has some of the last features that they put on these, like voice activated recording, which is nice, you don't have to sit around and listen to the pauses in your conversation, I guess. But these were very easy to use, and I think that's what made them so popular for so long, and the reason why they didn't change anything. They had the standard piano keys across the bottom. This one has a built-in microphone, a tape counter. It can be powered off of mains power, or four C-cell batteries. It also has plugs for an external microphone, an external earphone, uh, controls for the voice activated recording, tone and volume. Just a very simple unit. Anybody could work one of these. And I think that's why as kids we were sometimes fascinated by these. It's just a matter of putting a cassette in one of these, hitting record and play, and then all of a sudden now you're making memories. So these were truly unremarkable. But I think that's what makes them kind of fascinating. These were the workhorses of the compact cassette era. This is what they started out as and were used the exact same way all the way through the format's life. And I think they don't get any recognition, and I think that's a shame. Because these really, for a lot of us, even as kids, we did a lot of playing around with these. you got to admit. And it was a lot of fun. So if you have memories of using one of these, make sure to share those with us. I enjoy talking with folks and finding out that everybody has pretty similar memories growing up with things like this. If you like the video, please make sure to hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. That'll really help me out. And it'll keep you informed of new videos that come out. We try to do at least one a week or so with uh, new and interesting 
vintage electronics that uh, hopefully you'll get as much enjoyment out of as I do. So until next time, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you.